Hello rainbows and welcome back to Rainy Day Nails. So in today's nail video, I'm going to be recreating the underwater ripples design. Cat. In order to get the full effect, I'm going to be using an encapsulation method as well as a nice nude ombre so that we can get those sandy beach vibes. So to take the design concept a bit further, I went ahead with some gold foil as well as some sugaring rhinestones and created these really pretty like geode spaces on the nails. So this is going to be a really fun set. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. And with that being said, let's just get right into it. Hello everyone and thanks for clicking on another video. So I'm starting off with some Beatles foundation base coat just to have a nice protective layer on my natural nails. As I said, I'll be recreating the viral underwater like ripple reflection nails. I'm not quite sure what to call them exactly, but this effect is so cool. I absolutely had to know how to recreate it. And of course, I had to share it with y'all here. I do not often show the nail prep in my videos just simply because I feel like my natural nails are crusty looking. But I've been putting in some work and I felt confident enough to show y'all this base coat application here. It is pretty simple. Um, you just want to start by floating at the cuticle and then brushing a thin layer downwards um, towards the free edge of the nail. Making sure to wrap your free edge so that there isn't any chipping or lifting. Using some Model 1's nail glue, I'm going to apply these extra long square tips with a nice C curve to them. So I thought I would elaborate a bit on nail tip positioning here um, because a lot of people will look at their nails and think it's a bit crooked practicing on themselves or clientele. So ideally you want all of the nail tips or extensions to point upwards in the same direction at the same angle. So in order to get as close to that ideal angle as possible with every individual's different fingers and nails, you'll want to follow the direction in which your fingers stem off from your palm and not so much where they begin to lean after the second knuckle. So of course, you can do any length or shape you'd like with this design, but I'm going to keep a nice medium to long square shape. And we're beginning here by mixing up a sheer ocean blue. So this is one of two ways that I know of that you can get this effect here um, of a see-through jelly water solution. So I'm mixing up a blue gel polish and a bit of clear gel polish. I decided to use foundation as opposed to top coat as for better adhesion. I ended up adding just a little bit of this darker blue so that I could have a nice deep ocean shade going. So you want to paint, of course, the entirety of the tips, but I am overlapping a little bit onto the natural nail just to make sure that we have a seamless ombre once it comes to applying that acrylic. So I wanted this shade to be clear enough to kind of see through so it can still give that kind of liquid water effect, but also opaque enough with this blue color to where we'll have a nice amount of contrast from the white that we're going to use in our ripple effect. Had to leave this little clip in because that is just such a pretty color. So now I'm mixing together a sheer white shade so that we can paint that over top of the blue we have here. Without curing, we're going to dip into some clear with a detail brush and just kind of hover on top of certain areas in this white polish and it's going to create just the most amazing effect. So this is a really simple but effective method of getting a really realistic looking design. So as I continue to let time pass and place these other spots here and there, um, these are going to widen and begin to stretch out and connect to each other and end up in a design like this. It's just gonna kind of create these ombres and gradients and uh, little details that you really don't have to worry about at all, all on its own. 
So again, we're going to polish a coat of Milky White, a nice sheer coat, and then we're going to dip a detail brush into some clear foundation or top coat. I feel like either will work. And then just hold them over these certain areas and let gravity do the rest of the work. This design technique was so much fun. It was so easy and relaxing, almost like a, a zen tangle or a paint by numbers or something. So the effect is already popping off, but it is time to apply the acrylic and we're going to start with some clear acrylic. I'm using my favorite Mia Secret Monomer and I'm just going to go ahead and pour that along the brush and this is going to make sure that you don't have any spillage down the bottle. I still find Mia Secret Clear Acrylic to be the best quality for the price and we're just going to go ahead and start in with our first bead. Now we're not trying to build the thickness of the nail at all yet. Pretty much we are just wanting to encapsulate this gel design before we go about creating the ombre. So the thinner you can apply this layer, the better it's going to affect the overall thickness of your end result. So now using peaches and cream from VBD Pure, I had to order another container of this shade because I just love it so much for my skin tone. So we're going to go ahead and place our bead at the cuticle and brush it upwards into the clear acrylic that we previously laid, creating a nice ombre. Remember not to apply this nude acrylic too thick because you will still have to encapsulate the entirety of the nail to protect your ombre from any finishing filing.
So here we are dipping back into the clear acrylic so that we can encapsulate everything. This is where we'll be building the strength and shape of the nail. Starting with a bead in the middle, I'm going to brush that down towards the free edge and create the thickness that I want for the entirety of the nail. In some cases, you'll be able to use the same bead for a cuticle and an apex bead as I'm doing here. This is simply because my pinky is quite a smaller nail, so it is a bit easier that way. But um, usually you would put down an apex bead, blend that upwards into the body of the nail, and then place one at your cuticle. Make sure that it slopes up into the height of the apex, and you want the thickness to remain the same from the apex to the free edge. So typically an encapsulation nail design is going to end up a bit thicker just in general um, and don't feel discouraged about that. It's just about how many layers you're putting into it. It is all for the sake of art. It's time to go in with my e-file and I'm going to debulk any of this extra acrylic, um, making sure to keep my apex intact. It is really easy to, especially if you have a habit of filing horizontally as opposed to vertically on the nail, then um, it can be easy to remove the height of your apex, which can lead to nails snapping off and whatnot. So do be careful about um, debulking too much in that area. There are drill bits made more specifically for the cuticle area of debulking your nail extensions, but I do just like to use the same one. I feel like the crisp edges really helps me to get in there and make the cuticle a lot more flush, um, but of course, safety first. If you're not so confident yet with your cuticle work, then do go with a safer option. So it's better to remove less than more as you're going along with the debulking process. Um, you can always go back in and file off more. But my point is that you do not want to apply a whole lot of pressure when using an e-file. Um, the grit is already going to be doing that debulking for you. Just make sure that you are guiding it along the right path. Now using a 100-180 grit hand file, I'm going to do all of the final filing, making sure that the shape is nice and crisp and square. You want to make sure you have no overhang on the sidewall so everything looks nice and parallel from a side view, as well as your free edges, you want those to be nice and straight. And of course, you can never get a fully smooth or flat enough surface with just an e-file. So we are going to uh, run this across the top of our nails and make sure that everything is as even as possible. Thank you. 
So now we're going to dust and wipe our nails with alcohol so that way we have no residual acrylic that will get into our gel polish. So you could really top coat your design here and have a gorgeous underwater ombre going on. But since we are going a little bit further, I am going to use some more foundation from Beatles before we hop into the gold foil and mini rhinestones. It is so visually satisfying to put some clear coat over this design. The design looks so expensive and well thought out and it was so easy to make. It is really just so breathtaking. So again, you could absolutely leave your nails here because this is so cute on its own. But I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this rhinestone glue and my gold foil flakes and begin creating these freeform outlines that we can apply the foil to. You really don't have to worry too much about it looking neat. Of course, this is supposed to give a geode or rocky vibe. So in reality, the messier it looks, the better effect it's gonna give. Now with some more rhinestone glue, I'm going to fill in that center pocket and then sprinkle some of these miniature rhinestones on top. It was at this point that I realized the use for those little trays, you can put these in um, for a better sprinkling experience because it was quite difficult trying to get these out of the bag without creating a big mess, so. So I'm just going to repeat that process on each nail in different spots to give some abstractness to the design. Like I said, it was difficult because for some reason I didn't think to use a little tray for this, but I really didn't want to waste all of the little diamonds that fell on my paper towel. So I'm just pinching those up with my fingers and applying them to the rhinestone glue. I switched it up a little bit on this nail for variety and did a sort of diagonal geode here, um, kind of like a sneak peek as opposed to one that's fully broken open. So to really get that 3D crystal look, um, I want these miniature rhinestones to kind of pile up upon each other, um, but in the same sense, you don't want to use so much rhinestone glue that it is kind of ruining the shine of the rhinestones. So it, it is a bit tricky to do that and make sure that all of them are going to stay adhered to the nail. So you'll have to find a good balance for this technique, but it will not ruin your design if you do end up losing a few rhinestones. And that will complete our design for today's video. I'm finishing off with some Beatles gel top coat. Um, it is perfectly fine to go over the foil and I would actually recommend it, but do try your best to avoid the miniature rhinestones as to not dull the shine. I was really excited with how well I was able to recreate this viral nail effect and I really hope you guys enjoyed watching the process. Please feel free to suggest some nail designs I could recreate in future videos and make sure to keep an eye out for the next time I post.
This has to be one of my favorite final reveals in my videos thus far. I am all about the aesthetic and something about this setup just did the nails justice. So again, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really hope y'all enjoyed this set and I will see you in the next one. Peace!